Hello friends, this video on Kingdom Animalia Part 10 is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. So let us start our discussion with Porifera. So first let us look at the general characteristics of Porifera. So as you can see, the phyla, the list of phyla which I showed you just now, as you go down, your, the complexity of the organism will increase. As you go down, the organisms keep on becoming more recent. So when I start with Porifera, this is the most primitive group of animals. So when you talk about the Animalia kingdom, when you talk about the animals, most primitive group is Porifera. You will be surprised to know that almost 5000 species of Porifera exist today. Even though when you actually when we actually study about these polyphera, you might wonder, many of you might wonder that have I ever seen these animals? You might feel like that. But still, almost 5,000 of species exist. But since they exist mostly in uh, marine conditions, so many of us do not see it in our day-to-day -day life. So these are organisms with holes all over their body and that is why they get this name polyphera. The word pori comes from pores. So they have pores or holes all over their body. So if you look at this picture very closely, you'll see small holes all over their body, right? So that is the most important feature of the polyphers. Their body differentiation into tissues is minimum. As I said, they have the cellular level of organization. So their body is nothing but aggregates of cell. There is no specialization of cells or grouping of cells to form tissues. So the body differentiation is minimum. You understand what we mean by body differentiation. That means the differentiation of the cells of the body is to form tissues. So when there are no tissues formed, we say that the body differentiation is minimum. Cellular level of organization, the body is, it is, or in short, you can say that they have got cell aggregate body plan. Mostly asymmetrical, however, there are some which are radially symmetrical. Otherwise, there is no symmetry. They, they have asymmetry. So, you can see it from this picture. Their shape is completely arbitrary. So, no matter whichever axis you choose to divide it, you will never find two symmetrical halves. You will never have two halves which will be equivalent to each other because their shape itself is so arbitrary. So mostly they are asymmetrical with a few exceptions which are radially symmetrical. They prefer marine habitats generally seen near sea or ocean. In common language they are termed as sponges. They are often known as sponges. Why are they called sponges? They are, you, you understand what is a sponge, right? Most of you would have used a sponge for your bath and all. But, but don't uh, uh, understand that as this porifera. So why they are known as sponges is that even in a sponge, you will see that there are a lot of holes throughout the sponge. That is why they are also known as sponge because they have got small pores throughout their body. So porifera are also known as sponges. Now let us look at some examples of Porifera. Some examples would be Euplectalia, Sycon, Spongila. These are some examples of Porifera. So here you can see that in each of them you have got small pores throughout their body. See everywhere this is how a Spongila looks like. This is how a Sycon looks like and on top you have a bigger opening kind of a structure. See here at the top you have a bigger opening like structure here which is displayed here. So this opening is known as osculum. So we will talk about the structure of porifera in detail. So this is how it looks like basically. So these are some examples of porifera. So let us now talk about the structure of the porifera in little detail. Let us now look at the structure of porifera in detail. Now talking about the protection, it has a hard protective covering outside the body which is its skeleton and the skeleton is made up of spicules or spongin fibers. So these are the special type of fibers which form the outside skeleton and this ensures protection to the body of the porifera. Pores form canal system. So this is very very important because if you look at the structure of a porifera, 
they do not have any specialized tissues they do not have organs to perform some specialized function the only thing that they have is pores all over their body so these pores actually form a canal system and this canal system actually helps in doing all the metabolic activities in a podifera so we will see how this canal system actually works so in order to understand the canal system we need to understand the different parts of um, a podifera so here we have this polyfer so here you can see there is an opening here at the top so this opening is known as the osculum so okay let us do one thing let us talk about each part one by one so let us start with ostia what is ostia these are the minute pores on body through which water enters so as i showed you in the picture right there are small pores which are present in the body so here you can see these are the small pores on the surface of the body here you see them right so these pores are the ostia so they are known as ostia the name given to them is ostia so what will happen through these pores water will enter inside the porifera next is osculum what is osculum it is an opening in the central cavity which connects to the outside so this portion is the central cavity of the porifera so this portion will have a big opening that is called osculum and this will open to the outside so there are small pores throughout the body through which water will enter so water will enter in the cavity and that cavity will have an opening to the outside that opening is called osculum next is spongocoel what is spongocoel it is the central cavity surrounded by two layers of cells so this central cavity is known as spongocoel Spongio is from the term sponges and seal is from the term coelom. Coelom means cavity. So here it is a central cavity. That is why it is named as spongio seal. Now it is surrounded by two layers of cells. What are those two layers of cells? So if you look at the outer layer, so this is the outer layer. This is the outer layer of cell, and this is the inner layer of cell. Now the inner layer cells have flagella. So here you see these inner layer cells have this tail like structure. So these tail like structure is nothing but the flagella. So this is the outer layer of cell you see here outer layer of cell and this is the inner layer of cell this internal layer. So it will have two layers. Then the last one is quanocyte, that is the collar cells. What are these collar cells? So where are these present? They are present at the base of the flagellated cells. So these are the flagellated cells. Right? So at the base of these flagellated cells are the collar cells. So these are the collar cells cells so basically when i talk about the structure what is made up of it has small pores throughout its body they are known as ostia inside there is a central cavity which is known as spongocyte this spongocyte will have an opening to the outside that is called osculum the spongocyte will have a covering of two layers of cells there is one outer layer there is another inner layer that inner layer cells will have flagella and the base of the flagella is connected to the cells known as collar cells so these a uh, cup shaped kind of cells which you see here these are the collar cells and these hair like structures are the flagella clear okay so this is the basic structure of a porifer now we will see how this canal system functions i mean how water enters how it comes out and what happens in that process how it gets it, its food so how all these things happen so we will see that in the next slide. So let us try to understand this canal system. Now the flagellated cells set up water currents. Now water will enter through the ostia, that is the small pores. But this flagella by their movements, they will set up water currents. Now water will enter through the ostia. Okay. Now filter small food particle from water now along with that water some small food particles will also enter 
inside the porifera. So now who will filter the small food particle? So this filtration will be done by these collar cells. So they will actually filter out the food particles from the water. So ingestion of food particles by collar cells. So only the food particles will be chosen from that water and they will be ingested. That is they will be taken in by the collar cells. So this is how water will be entering, right? Water will be entering from outside through the through these pores which you have here. Now once, as soon as the water enters, these collar cells, these are the collar cells, they will snatch away the food particles from water. Okay. Now what will happen to those food particles? Then those food particles will be distributed to all other cells by the amoeboid cells. Where are these amoeboid cells? Now this was your collar cell, right? And at the base of the collar cell, again, you see another type of cells. They are known as amoeboid cells. You see here, this is, this is the flagella. The next is the collar cell and the next one is the amoeboid cell. Now, the collar cell will ingest the particle or it will take the particle inside. And then this amoeboid cell will distribute the food to all other parts of the animal. And what will happen to the water? The water will go out through the osculum of spongocytes. So water will enter through ostrea. The food from the water will be taken in by the collar cells and amoeboid cells and then the water will move out through the osculum. So you understand, understood the process that how even though they do not have a specialized mouth or they do not have a specialized digestive system, even then they manage to take their food and absorb nutrients from them. So this is known as the canal system. So that is why I say that pores are the most important part of polyphores because it is because of the pores that they have this canal system and because of this canal system, they are able to get their nutrition which is needed for their survival. Clear? Okay. So let us look at the advantages of this canal system. First is water transport, so it helps in transporting water from one place to another. Exchange of respiratory gases, so along with that water, the dissolved gases will also come in. So that exchange respiration will also happen. Food gathering, obviously it is a mode of uh, getting your food. Waste removal, now when the water, after the food is taken in, the remaining water goes out through the osculum. Now along with that water, all the waste materials which is present inside the body, that also goes out. So this canal system acts as excretory system by removing the waste. It acts as respiratory system by helping in exchange of gases. It also helps in circulatory system by transporting water. It also helps in digestive system by providing food, ingesting and digesting food and then absorbing the food and distributing it to different parts of the animal. Right? So this was the detail of the structure of porifera. So let us now talk about reproduction in porifera. How do they reproduce? Okay, so the organ systems are clear. I mean, organ systems, even though they are not present in porifera, but they have a substitute for that. And that substitute is the canal system. What about reproduction? Canal system doesn't help in reproduction. So how do they reproduce? Let's have a look. Now they can reproduce both asexually as well as sexually. If you talk about asexual reproduction, Asexual reproduction happens by fragmentation. We all know what is fragmentation, what happens in fragmentation. The parent breaks into multiple pieces on maturity and each of which gives rise to a new organism. So it is like when a parent becomes mature, it will break itself into some two, three pieces and each of those pieces will give rise to a new organism. So that is how porifera reproduce asexually. If I talk about sexual reproduction, it happens by fusion of gametes. So for gametes, you need a male gamete and a female gamete. But these porifera, they are hermaphrodite. That is, there is no separation of sexes. So it is not that you need one male gamete. So there is no distinction between a male and a female. It is like all the same. So for sexual reproduction, you just need two gametes because all gametes are identical. So such organisms which do not have separate sexes, they are known as hermaphrodite. So polyphers are hermaphrodite. So any two gametes will fuse together to form a new organism. So this is how the polyphers reproduce. 
Now, another important thing in porifers, you would have seen that, as I said before also, they do not have distinct organs, no stomach, no kidneys, nothing. So all those basic body functions like digestion, ingestion, excretion is performed by the canal system. You would have also observed that there are no muscle cells as well. Now, when you don't have any muscle cells, do you expect these organisms to move? Because muscle cells are the one which actually help in movement. So that is the reason why there is no movement and the porifers are immobile. So they cannot move from one place to another. You remember I spoke uh, some time back while I was talking about the characteristics of animalia. I was telling that most of the animals are mobile but not all. So again polyphers are also an exception which are immobile due to the absence of muscle cells. Now, when we talk about that fertilization part, it is internal. That means the fusion of the gametes take place inside the body of the polyphers. Thank you. Please visit www.examfear.com to watch more videos, attempt free online test, get free study material, find tutors and mentors. Thank you once again.